Okay, so we're continuing with the series of every question that has ever been asked, and we're going to be looking today at recurring decimals. So if you do want to download this, it's linked in the description, and it's fully hyperlinked, and it has all the questions up to November 2021. So we'll look at recurring decimals. We're going to do one question on ordering, and then the rest about converting them to fractions. Loads of these are non-calculated, by the way. So this first one says, write these numbers in order of size, start with the smallest. Well, I'm going to begin by writing these as like in columns. So that's 0 0.246. The 46 recurring just means that that 46 is going to keep going like this. The next one says 0 0.246 recurring. So it's going to be 0 0.246, and then the rest of them are all sixes, like this. And then this one means that it goes 246, 246, the dot at the beginning and the end, meaning how it's going to repeat. So it goes 246, 246, 2, etc. And the last one is just 0 0.246. And so the rest of the spaces would be zeros. Now, if we're going to put them in order of size, we're going to begin with the one that is the smallest, which is the 0 0.246, because this one then starts with a zero. So I'm going to cross that one off and say we've dealt with that. Now, looking at these numbers, they all have the same start point. So all we need to do is just compare what would come next. Well, it's going to be the third one that comes next, which is 0 0.246, recurring like this, because that has a 2 in its position. It's then going to be the first one, which has the 4 in the position, which is 0 0.246, with the dot above the 4 and the 6. And then the last one that we've got is our 0 0.246 recurring, which is the last one that we have there. So writing them in that way is the best way to compare the decimals. So we'll double check we've got it right. We've got 0 0.246, then we've got the recurring decimals at the beginning above the 2 and the 6, above the 4 and the 6, and then above the 6. The rest of the questions are all about taking recurring decimals and expressing them as a fraction. So if you haven't um, learned this, you can pretty much watch this video and it will teach you how to do it because it is pretty repetitive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal 0 0.418 recurring. Now you don't have to write this out, but you don't have to say let x equals, but it's the proper way of doing it. So it's 0 0.418, 18, 18. And what we're going to try and do is get rid of the recurring decimal. So I'm going to times it by 10 first of all. That gives me 4.181818. Now I need to think what I need to times it by so that I have the same recurring decimal. So I need to times this original one by 1000. So if I actually times that by 1000 and I get 1000x, I get 418.181818. Now, if I was to subtract these and do 1,000x take away 10x, I would have this number here take away this one. And luckily, all of the 1,8s, all the recurring decimals would be eliminated. So I just have 418 take away 4. All of the recurring decimals go. So I get 990x equals 414. So to express it as a fraction, it is 414 over 990. Now it doesn't say to express it as a fraction in its simplest form, so technically we could leave it like this. I'm just going to show you what it says in the mark scheme, 414 over 990, but it does say you could simplify it all the way down to 23 over 55 if you wanted to. But it didn't ask you to, so I wouldn't waste the time doing it personally. Ted is trying to change 0 0.43 recurring to a fraction. Here is the start of his method. So he's got x, He's got 10x, and then he's subtracted them. Evaluate Ted's method so far. Well, his isn't going to work because he's trying to do 4.34 recurring minus 0 0.43 recurring. The way we did it in this question was we made it such that these numbers were exactly the same as each other so that they would eliminate. So in his method, because of the 3.4 recurring and the 4.3 recurring, the decimals are not going to eliminate. So evaluate Ted's method so far. His method is incorrect. His method is incorrect. And we need to give a reason why. The recurring decimals will not eliminate. The recurring decimals will not eliminate. Let's have a look at some of the things that they've accept for this one. So it says acceptable answers. He should have used 100 rather than 10x. OK, that's fine. And, ah, oh, look, Ted's working does not eliminate the recurring decimals. That's the one that we said. Just be careful of the ones that wouldn't be so accepted. You couldn't just say it's not complete or it's not correct. Or you couldn't even say he should have used 1,000x. You have to be a little bit more specific 
than what has been um, than those ones. Okay, again, it's a non-calculator question, and we want to prove algebraically that x can be written as 24 over 55. So they've already told us that x is equal to 0 0.436 recurring. I quite like writing out a few more of them just to remind me what it looks like. So I'm going to times it by 10. When I times it by 10, I get 4.36 recurring. Now I need to get it so that I have um, the same decimals afterwards. So I'm going to times this one by 100. In other words, it's going to be 1,000x. So 1,000x is 436.36 recurring. You could do this whole question literally using recurring language rather than writing out the three sixes in the way that I've done. So when I subtract them and I do 1,000x take away 10x, that would be the same as the 436 take away 4. It's going to just be all of this bit take away all of this bit. And 436 take away 4 is 432. So I get that 990x is equal to 432, which means that x is 432 over 990. Now, there's a bit of a clue that it's going to go down to 24 over 55. So I'm going to start off by recognizing that 990 and 432, if it's going to go down to 55, I've got to do some simplifying. So I'm going to half the top and bottom. If I half the top, I would get 216. And if I half the bottom, that is going to be 495. Now, I wonder if there's anything else that they should have in common. So you could check if they're in the three times table by adding the digits. So 2 and 1 and 6, that adds to 9. So that would divide by 3. 4 and 9 and 5, that adds to 13. And 5 is 18. So yeah, they're both going to divide by 3. So I'm going to do 216 divided by 3. That's 72. And I'm going to do the 495 divided by 3. Goes into 4 once, remainder 1, 6, remainder 1, and it goes into 15 five times. We get 72 out of 165. And it looks like it might actually even divide by 3 again. So 72 divided by 3 is 24, and 165 divided by 3 is 55. Now, I wonder how much of that they're going to need you to show. They might actually just say, um, just finding a difference. With, no, you actually probably could have just gone straight from that to that and you would have still been given the marks even without showing that additional working in between, okay? So we can do another proof. They're very repetitive. I'll go a little bit faster. Let's let x equal 0 0.256 recurring. I'll show you how you don't have to write it all out every time. So we could say that 10x is 2.56 recurring. If I do 1,000x, it would be 256. Oh, not 1,000x. That's not going to work. We need to just do, uh, let me see what we've got there. That's 5, 6. Yeah, 1,000x is going to work. What was I doing? Silly me. We get 256.56 recurring. So when we subtract these, 1,000x take away 10x is 256 take away 2, which is 254. That's 990x equals 254. So x is 254 over 990. All we need to do is simplify that by halving the top and bottom. When I half the bottom, I get 495. And when I half the top, I get 127, which is they what they wanted us to do there. So this was just showing you can do it without writing out all of the, de the decimals. But maybe it's a bit more confusing. Maybe it's a bit easier, whatever you prefer. And you'll see here, it's just the proof, but it's the same as what I've done on the previous page. So this one is a little bit more simple. It's only a two mark question. We're going to let x equal 0 0.73 recurring. So I'm going to times it by 10, which would give me 7.3 recurring. And I'm also going to times the original one by 100, so I get 73.3 recurring. When I subtract these and I do 100x take away 10x, 73 take away 7 is 64. So that is 90x equals 64. So x is equal to 64 over 90. Have I done that subtraction right? 73 take away 7. 1, 2, 3, 66. I knew something didn't feel right there. So that should be 66 in these places. And for it to become 11 over 15, we can see if I divide the top by 6, and if I divide the bottom by 6, I get 11 over 15, which is what they wanted there. And again, that could be done on the calculator. You could have just done 66 over 90, and it straight away tells you that it goes to 11 over 15, and it also gives you the correct decimal expansion. 
So proof doesn't even really need the mark scheme. This one is a little bit different because it wants us to do it with a multiplication. So the key for this one is we're gonna change them both to fractions. So I'm gonna start off with my x being equal to 0 0.136 recurring. If I do 10x, I get 1.36 recurring. I'm then going to do 990 or 1000x. I've skipped a, a beat there. 1000x is going to be 136.36 recurring. So when I subtract them and I get 990x, I get 135. So x is 135 over 990. And it's because I've got a calculator, I'm going to make it simplify that for me. Okay, I'm going to do 135 over 990, which is 3 over 22. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a different letter, but if you did pick x again, it wouldn't be the end of the world. y is 0 0.2 recurring, so 10y is 2.2 recurring. So if I do the 10y take away y, I just get 9y equals 2 which means that y is 2 ninths. So when I'm doing 0 0.136 recurring times 0 0.2 recurring, I'm actually doing 3 over 22 multiplied by 2 over 9, which is 6 over 22 times 9, 198. And 6 over 198, if I simplify that, I'll get 1 over 33. And I can just write down underneath it that that is 1 over 33. So I guess we should say at the end, because it does want us to say in a proof, hence, because it's a proof question, uh, 0 0.136 recurring multiplied by 0 0.2 recurring is equal to 1 over 33. I don't think the other ones needed there to be any um, concluding statement. The reason I did that is because it did say here um, for a correct arithmetic and concluding the proof and it does say that in both of these things so I think we need to make sure that we do have that little sentence that's in this little part down here okay. That's everything on, multi on the recurring decimals. That last question is kind of the weirdest of the ones that we've got there. I'm going to keep going with this playlist. If you think this is something that's useful for you, do make sure that you're subscribed to my channel because I've got tons of other things, not just going through these exam questions. I've also got video tutorials on loads of different topics, including this one here, um, which you can go and check out.